Spread love, man. What's up, beautiful souls? How are you doing today? I hope all is well. Today I'm going to talk about the topic, conscious and subconscious mind. Of course, I'm also going to insert a few audio samples of Mr. Bill Donahue talking about the subject. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know your opinion. And don't forget to spread love today. Enjoy. Our conscious mind is the only entity on the face of the earth that remembers its beginning and looks forward to its end. The only one. And, and what happens basically in our lives, you know, we, all, we become like a puff of smoke, don't we? T take a look, there's a fellow's hat hanging on the wall. Was, was quite, quite, a, quite a character, quite a young man, that, that black hat. You can't see it on TV, the black hat hanging on the wall is kind of a memory of, of somebody that came through this church, very strange young man, had all kinds of difficult encounters with the law, and, and died in an automobile accident. And basically, his horror of his life was because of conditioning. Everything, everything was programmed into here, how he would react, you know. And, and he tried desperately. And in fact, we worked very hardly, hard with him, and the conditioning was beginning to change. And then something happened. We'll get into that in another time. But basically, all of us then, what are, we, what are you trying to do? With, you're trying to figure something out in your life, aren't you? I mean, because after all, what, what's your purpose here? What, what, what reason do you have? And the thing is that we're always trying to figure out next week or next month or what we're going to do, and yet we don't even know for what. What's the purpose of it? Where are you going? You know, when you think if you, you, know, you want security and then you're living like a flea on a tennis ball going through the universe at 40,000 miles an hour with nobody driving it, you know, where's your security? Where are you going to go? And now, consider why you are the way you are. Why is Rose the way she is? Why is Don the way he is? Why is Albert the way he is? Why is Margaret the way he is? The point is, you think the way you do out of habits. It's habit. That's why you are the way you are. You think the way you do out of habit. And habits are thoughts which dig themselves deep into the subconscious. Thoughts that are like seeds, and they burrow themselves deep into the subconscious. And when they are ready to blossom, those negative thoughts which have buried themselves deep into your subconscious will one day blossom into tumors. Sure? One day, those thoughts which have buried themselves deep into your subconscious will blossom as tumors or some other kind of disease. And all of the festering that goes on in our minds, all of the festering that comes out through the subconscious, all of the hate which resurrects itself and grows out of the subconscious, we call tradition. Oh, even your parents said, why do you think the way? Because you do, that's why. Huh? Did you ever ask your father, why? Because I said so. And you know what? Many years ago, he asked his father why, and his father said, because I said so. Nobody ever has said why. It's just because. It's tradition. It's the way it's done. Go to page uh, 792 in the little Bibles and look at Matthew chapter 15 and what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 15. Page 792. And in verse 6, he says, And honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus you have made the commandment of God of no effect by your tradition. You see, Jesus Christ had contempt for tradition. He had contempt for religion. He had contempt for everything that the system uh, holds valuable and wonderful. Let it all fall down, he said. Let it all tumble down. He said, oh, what beautiful churches. He said, nothing but a pile of rocks. Let it all fall down. Because he had contempt for the tradition. But here's the point that you've got to understand. 
And this is the most magnificent thing of all. Inside of you is the power and the energy to take us all above all the negativity of these deep thoughts which are burrowed into our subconscious. All of the negativity which produced the hurt, all of the negativity which produced the disease and the violence, inside of you is a power to take you above that. But you know what? Right now, your traditional thought patterns have you firmly locked in the lower. You're locked in the cellar. And there's a deadbolt lock on it. And very few of us know how to get the key to open the door to let all of that crap out. All right. I'll get back to Mr. Donahue in a minute. It's important to understand that the same power that brings bad fortune also brings good. It is not a different power. There is only one power. It is not a question of the power. It is how you use that power. He also asked the questions, where are you going? What is your direction in life? If you start to take into you what Jesus said, the Buddha said, the Krishna said, if you take that information in you, then the future is unlimited. The possibilities are unlimited. Now the conceptions that you have of yourself are locked in the subconscious mind. The only way to change you is if somehow the key can be found to unlock that door and let that stuff out. Otherwise, everything sits in there and causes you problems. So where is the key? Where is the key for everything your parents have put in there that is incorrect? For everything that the government has put in there that is incorrect? For everything that your friends has put in there that is incorrect? All of that stuff is festering in your subconscious mind. Now, let's get back to Mr. Donahue. Take a look at page 847 in your Bible. Go to Luke chapter 11. <clears throat> Luke chapter 11, page 847 in your Bible. And then Jesus says in Luke chapter 11, verse 52, Woe unto you lawyers, he's talking biblical scholars, you have taken away the key of knowledge. Why? Because you entered not in yourselves. And them that were entering in, you hindered. In other words, what Jesus Christ just said, by entering within yourself, you take the key to unlock the door and let all of this hurt out. But right now, it's locked. And everything is... And if you study Carl Jung, you study Sigmund Freud, you'll find this is the location of your problem. And you don't even know that. Because the subconscious mind is the key. Do you know what the subconscious mind does? It never sleeps. When you dream, you dream out of the subconscious mind. It never sleeps. It never forgets. It remembers everything that you've forgotten. It never forgets a thing. And a psychiatrist can take your subconscious mind right back to the beginning. Sometimes you walk down a street and you smell something. Instantly you're transformed ported back to maybe your aunt's house or your grandma's house or something. And all the people surround you. You can feel the house. You can feel everything. You can see leaves on a lawn, on a front lawn, or the smell of the water hitting the grass at night. And you're back somewhere many, many years ago. And because it's all stored here, it's never forgotten. Everything you've ever heard, everything you've ever learned, everything that's ever been told to you is accepted as fact and stored in the subconscious mind. The most powerful instrument in the universe is the subconscious mind. The conscious mind is only 10%. And the thing is that everything that goes into the subconscious that causes the problem comes from the conscious. Somebody tells you something. It goes in there, and it, and it finds a place to dwell and grow in there. Somebody teaches you something. Somebody frightens you. It all goes from here, your conscious mind, and then it goes into the subconscious mind. And when it goes into the subconscious mind, you forget it. But your subconscious doesn't. So <laughs> a situation happens. See, this is, this is only 10% of, this is the key of tithing. This is why God said it is so important that you tithe. I need you to give that 
I need you to turn that off because as long as you leave this active, all of the fear, all of the hate, all of the discouragement, all of the depression is going to come flying in here and root itself in the Garden of Eden. And the Garden of Eden is going to be filled with weeds and all ugly things growing in there. This here conscious mind has good things. You help people with it, don't you? I mean, sometimes you say, I'm gonna, they're going to help the people with Hurricane Andrew. That's coming out of the conscious mind. That's a good thing. has a lot of bad things. And it's called in the Bible, in the book of Genesis, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And it says, don't eat from that tree. Go to Eden at the east, to the right side. Eat from there. But this here, first of all, has to be reprogrammed now. We'll, we'll, get in, we'll, we'll, we'll get into that. See, because who's the servant here? Look at the size of the subconscious mind. Look at the size of the conscious mind. And the fact is that the servant is the subconscious. The master is this little insignificant conscious mind. The tiny little conscious mind is the master. And this is the amazing thing. The greatest power in the universe does exactly what it is told by the little insignificant 10%. It obeys everything that comes from here. And if you tell this that you're sick, it will fester, it will find a root, and it will blossom into a little tree of sickness, and it will grow. Because it believes everything you tell it. And in the same way, if you tell it you're not, you can then start on your way of life. What does it mean? Lie to it! <laughs> lie to it! Tell it lies! I really do feel good. <laughs> I really feel great. <laughs> You're snotting and snorting all over the place. Tell it! It doesn't know any different. It says, hey, what's all that noise? He says he feels good. Okay. And all of a sudden, things start triggering out of the subconscious mind. This is where visualization comes from, from Dr. Bernie Siegel. This is where visualization comes from Dean Ornish. They're telling something that really isn't true, and the subconscious mind thinks it is true, so the subconscious mind starts doing things as as if it is true, and all the hormones start flowing. It doesn't know the difference, see? It doesn't know that it's not being told the truth, so it starts reacting. So now you can see why something has to happen. Hold on. I'll get back to him. In the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 2, it says, And be not confirmed to this world, and this world is the conscious mind, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. In other words, the subconscious mind is a computer and you got to put in a new disk in there and reprogram it. The most magnificent computer in the world is sitting right between your ears. You got to reprogram it because it's filled with information. It is filled with coded messages and these things are growing into the things that are torturing you and causing you the problems that you are going through right now. The problem in our lives are not caused by the things out there, but they are caused by everything in here, in the subconscious. And it's been stuck and piled up. Nobody wants to be subjected to the negativity. Nobody wants to be subjected to the hurting. Nobody wants to be subjected to the, to the sickness. But yet the point is we don't even realize that behind this veil is the answer to all of that, to ridding ourselves of all of that, the mechanism. But you see, the point is you say, why do I hate this job? It's been ordered for you to hate that job from in there. It's not that you, you're told to hate it. It's programmed in there. Why doesn't anybody like me? Why don't I like anybody else? It's all programmed in there. Behind this veil are orders that come out of the subconscious that dictate to your con exactly what you're going to do. You've placed it all in there, and now it's all going to come back to you. This is the way it's going to be. And we, we get very unhappy. And then what do we do when we're unhappy? We make everybody else unhappy. <laughs> Happiness comes you know, you wonder sometimes, why do I feel the way I am? Why am I acting the way I am? Because it's triggered from deep within your subconscious mind. It's resting there. And you don't even know this. That's why I encourage you to get the book by Carl Jung. Because, you know, to listen to me, you know, what the heck am I? Or to listen to some preacher, what is that? But listen to a man who is a psychoanalyst of the highest credentials talk about 
this thing here and what it is. This is that atomic plant. If it's not handled properly, it is an atomic bomb that'll kill millions. If it is handled properly, it is the power of the universe to set the universe free. Let, let's go on and just look at, uh, at the point here. All of these troubles, and you, you have to know, each one of you in your life, what the troubles are, enter your subconscious from your conscious mind. They come in. Here's, let's say, an unwanted child. An unwanted child has all of this that's told to him, filter in here, find its way into the subconscious. He grows. He's forgotten about it. It's not forgotten here. And what you have now is the makings of a killer. What you have now is a serial killer. You have a rapist. You have a violent, antisocial person. Because of all of the hurt that came in at his subconscious at a very early point in his life, found its way deep as a seed, and now it grew, and whatever stimulated it, it burst forth into a horrible flower of killing and raping and pillaging. Not because this person is necessarily bad, not at all. This person doesn't even know. This person doesn't even know the connection. And, 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 the, and the law, for the most part, doesn't know the connection. Oh, this is a horrible person. We, kill. we never go back and, 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 and make a fine or do anything bad to the people that actually put the fear and the hurt and the guilt and all the terror into that subconscious mind at a very early age. In other words, when you scream at your kids and when you program all of this negativity into the minds of children, it's going to grow and it's going to come back. Fear of the unknown. Yes. Exactly what it is. Because you've forgotten the whole thing. Your conscious mind forgets it. Oh, he's a rapist. Why? He's a serial killer. Why? Does all these horrible antisocial things. Why? Everybody forgets. Nobody remembers because it's not remembered over here. But remember, whatever negativity, whatever horror you put into the mind of a child or anybody else is never forgotten in the subconscious mind. Never.